Hello, everybody. Welcome to Evolving into the Cosmic Heart. And I don't know why, Jamie, but I've got butterflies in my tummy today. Ooh, well, I wonder what, what energy is coming forward today then for us. It seems like a big one then, huh? Can you hear me all right? I've got a different microphone on. I can. I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Very good. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so happy Monday, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. another start to Seven. another week. Another start to another week. Mm-hmm. They are going a bit too fast. I'm hoping oh they're going to slow down a bit it's now. Really flying, isn't it? Yeah. Go check on our page as well right now and pull up the comments so we can see who is tuning in with us today. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, I can see us. We're there. Okay, I'm going to share that right now. I am actually feeling a bit calmer this week. Are you? Things have sort of slowed down. Mm. Something happened between Friday night and Saturday. I'm not Uh, sure what uh, it is. I know. (laughs) Like since, I don't know, the middle of March, I've just been like getting this like flood of light. I'm sure it's not just me. Mm. <laughs> I think the whole planet's been getting it. But I've been like, able to see like this, like waves of light coming in. And when I woke up Saturday, I was just like, I was just like, wow, you know what? I'm going to stay in bed today. I took the whole day in bed and I was sort of noticing, hmm, it's gone. <laughs> Mm. Those waves of light, they've, they've gone. And I was like, oh. and then I went out for a walk on Sunday because I didn't actually go out all day Saturday, which is quite rare for me. I did a bit of online shopping. <laughs> oh, that's, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. On Sunday, I went out for a walk and I thought, oh, I feel, I feel like I'm more in a cave now. I feel like I've gone into some sort of like a mm. place. Mm-hmm. Wow. But I, I have to say, I am missing the waves of light. I was loving them, but I'm also not missing them because I haven't been able to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know you've been saying that, yeah. which is interesting because I go back and forth where I have, a, I have trouble falling asleep. But then when I fall asleep, I feel like I could just sleep forever. So it's very interesting the way that it is impacting everyone People differently yeah mm-hmm. yeah I was really annoying because I, I was doing this thing like I was so tired and I'd be falling asleep I'd be falling asleep I'd wake up and then I'd do it again and I'd be like oh my god oh. you know never like I've, I've never been like that sort of like oh sorry that. yeah sorry I just <laughs> I just pulled up the comments so that I could see I shared it as well for everyone so we do have Catherine and Annie and Zebra uh, tuning in light right now live with us. So welcome. If there's anybody else tuning in and I didn't say your name, just drop us a comment so we can see that you're here. You know, Facebook's a little, can be a little strange sometimes. So I'm going to try to. I know. I know. Keeps us, keeps us, you know, sort of on our feet, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I can see Kimberly and Belinda saying hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Kimberly. Hi, Belinda. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hi. Now and forever. <laughs> yes. I think mine, mine's a little bit delayed, so I might not be able to see everybody right away. So um, I'll do my best and keep up with the comments. And, and uh, you know, um, we appreciate you being here with us today. So how has everyone's weekend been? How, and you said you've been feeling, um, you know, you felt Saturday, like you just wanted to sleep. Right? Is that I just I stayed in bed. Stayed I just in bed. stayed in bed. I don't think I've had much of a rest. I mean, you know, I do yoga and meditate and go swimming at the fjord. Well, I say swimming, I go and dip. In the fjord. <laughs> yeah, but um, things have it's really shifted. How how about you? How was your weekend? So it was quite busy in the mornings um, between Friday and Saturday, but then it was like the rest of the day. I couldn't bring myself to do anything but just be. Mm. And all I wanted to do was just be in nature. 
So I literally just put out a blanket below. I have a, a beautiful pussy willow tree and I put out the blanket and I lay down with my dog and just pulled cards or researched things. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then Sunday I, you know, I started making Sundays our no work day. So I do nothing on Sundays, yeah. but for myself. Uh, so um, I just, you know, more of that, more of just being. So I did feel like there was this energy that came up that was kind of like, no, it's time to be still. And I do have some information that might shed some light on that. Some yeah, because I, I didn't even go on social media yeah. all weekend. That's like, I, I think I've got into more, worse and worse habits since the coronavirus time. I've sort of done it more and more and more. And it's like, I just thought, you know what, I'm just, because I always, the thing is, I look at like friend stuff and I always end up doing work stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, I thought like, no, I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to let it all be. And it felt, it felt, I wasn't forcing myself. It was the natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. So something really shifted. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on so <laughs> this is going to be a little lengthy. I'll do my best. Okay. I'll do my best. Um, Whew, where to begin? All right. So those of you who are in our evolving into the cosmic group, um, you know, our private group that Rachel and I have where we share a lot of special magical stuff, information and tools know that in the very beginning of the month, I shared a channeled message that came through and this has been the overall theme for the month so without going into all of the details because you you'll have to run over to the group and join to check out it's free to join for the month of may so hurry on up and check it out um the information that came through really i'll just put it really in a summary was may was going to be really pivotal for us and uh there was all of these gateways basically that were opening to higher awareness and higher love and then, believe it or not, it was really interesting that I was not able to tune in almost, I don't, for almost a week to Rachel, I don't know if everybody has seen it, but pulls a rune for, um, for the month, or pulls a couple runes for the month and does a rune reading from the full moon to the full moon to really let us know what we can expect and what's going on. It's interesting that I had not been able to tune into that until yesterday when I was just kind of laying around relaxing. And sure enough, the message that Rachel brought forward was um, about the collective, something shifting within the collective and within humanity coming together. And the whole time I'm listening to Rachel talk, I wanted to just yell out to her, it's solidarity, solidarity. I hear it in my head as she was talking. So she, she was saying that. But it was the word just kept screaming to me. So it was like, you know, if you're having a conversation together, you want to chime in and be like, yes, this is what it is. The word was solidarity. That's what I kept hearing. And I found that interesting because a few, maybe like a week or so ago, a friend shared, it was actually Angie Walter, shared a post that she came across um, regarding a Pleiadian portal that was opening up. And I didn't have time to look at it. So again, I kept setting it aside. But Pleiades and the energy of the constellation Pleiades has been really present um, in my cards. Uh, I'm almost feeling like I have some guides stepping forward that are Pleiadian energy that want to connect and communicate. A lot of the work that I do has a Pleiadian background to it, I should say. So there's some air of Pleiadian energy. And... Um, Kind of, I'm kind of reserved when it comes to just connecting with energies. You know, I have to really, there's a whole process that I go through. You know, I'm very cautious. I don't just open myself to anything or anyone. And that's very important. So um, I finally said, okay, I get it. Pleiades, let me, let me see what this is all about. So the Pleiadian constellation came into focus, okay? There are seven stars within the Pleiadian constellation and they're called, there's so many different legends and stories through many different cultures about them. Um, but long and short of it is they're called the seven sisters. And these seven stars, there is one star that shines the brightest. And forgive me if I botch this word for people who are more familiar with this. It sounds like I wrote it down so I remember. As Alcyon, Alcyon something like that. It's the brightest of the seven stars. So between May 16th 
and May 24th is when it's a seven day period when the sun actually, and have all my notes written down here. So just I'm looking down at them if you see me. Um, it's when Taurus is, we are currently, the sun is in the sign of, of Taurus right now, which is huge with bringing it up that love energy because uh, Taurus is ruled by Venus and it's all about the love. And you know, heard me talk about this before. It's getting ready to move into the sign of Gemini. And I believe that's on the 20th of May. So when the sun gets to that point of moving in an alignment with the um, Taurus and Gemini zodiacs on the wheel, the Pleiadian constellation is actually highlighted. And so you can think about it in the sense that like it's beginning to merge with the sun, thus the energy and the galactic frequencies of Pleiades can then be beamed into planet Earth through our sun. Okay, yes, so this is big. I'm getting covered in chills, by the way. So if you understand what the sun represents, because the planets are all a part, we're part of the planets, you know, as above, so below. And I have seen during energy healing sessions, planetary systems moving throughout people's energy and biofields. So we all are affected and impacted by the planets, the zodiac, all of that. So the sun represents our core, our center, our will our power and our will center. So now this shows you the area where the Pleiades energy is really kind of influencing or enhancing and how it's coming through our power centers. Now, I just also received another channeled message a few days ago that is also posted in the group. And it specifically spoke of our solar plexus areas that I myself had been suddenly having these interesting, unexplainable bouts of nausea on and off out of nowhere. And it talks about the, um, the umbilical cords and the connection to the cosmic womb, right? So you'll have to read more in the group. But this galactic frequency is really coming into our, uh, into planet Earth, beaming these waves of cosmic light. And it's Light, it's believed to be waves of violet light and purple streams of light. So that I cannot say for sure, but I will say I have seen interesting beams of golden light creating sacred geometric shapes and symbols in when I'm connecting on my own. So there are some beams of light coming through. Now, what are they doing? So if you think about our core and our power center here, it is facilitating us to come more into our power, which we've been talking about all month long, but also it's influencing humanity to come together because these are waves of love and light that are filling our collective and also filling planet earth. So it is bringing up this unity within the collective, within humanity to come together. Why? to bring it, it's going to bring up, it's enhancing, it's not manipulating us. I want to make that clear. It's enhancing the love, the beauty, the softness, the compassion that already exists within humanity, but might not be utilized, might not be being, um, because of everything else that we have go on, you know, in our lives, it suppresses some of those beautiful traits and characteristics that we do have. So it's enhancing that love, solidarity, unity, and oneness that's already there within us. So I feel combined with Rachel's beautiful message the other day that, and the message that came forth channeled through Yeshua and the dolphins and all of this energy is about bringing humanity back to love. You really have to read those messages to really fully understand the impact that this all has that we had no idea when we, when we, when we brought these messages forward, we had no idea, but now we do. So on the 20th, um, I can't say this right, but the, uh, the brightest star again, known as a, let me, I wrote it down, uh, a, where did I write this? A-L-C-Y-O-N-E. So it sounds like Alcyon or Alcyon. Again, I apologize. These words, I haven't heard it said, so I 
I'm going off that. Um, but it's going to be, that one will be shining the brightest on the 7th. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not on the 7th, on the 20th, which is a numeric code. So if you look at, I don't know, I said seven because it's that seven, seven days, seven sisters, mm-hmm. seven stars, yeah, yeah. but the seven represents alchemy. And then the number is a five, two, 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 four, five, 20, 2020, five, two, two, two. So that in itself is a code, right? So we see all these numbers as activation codes, frequencies, keys. And then if you add, if you add them all up, they equal an 11. 11 is the number of awakening, epiphanies, spirituality, coming into a higher consciousness. Then 20 is the number of balance, unity, relationships. So a mass awakening of the collective consciousness of unity, having this epiphany moment that the only way out of this is solidarity, coming together as one, working together. So it will be enhanced and it's going to be interesting to see what the energy brings on the 20th, which is the exact day the sun moves into Gemini. All right. So there's more, there's, there's other things that are going on, but I will let that soak in for a second (laughs) before I go into anything (laughs) further. (laughs) So that's, that's really, that's really interesting because, all right. So I did post, I did post one thing at the weekend, but it was, um, I read articles. It's a new, a British newspaper called the guardian and they have, you know, some positive things in there as well. And they, someone posted an article about, um, I don't know if you, this is a book, it's always on the British school curriculum and I had to do it at school as part of like, you know, my exams that I had to do. It's called Lord of the Flies. Oh. It is such a miserable <laughs> book. I really have it. miserable. And it's about, it's about, it's a story about a group of boys that get like stranded on a desert island and they are, they just form like, you know, this group of savages and they're just horrible to each other and kill mm the fat kid is you know it's just sort of human nature at the worst and I hated this book and (laughs) someone had written an article in the Guardian saying he'd found a real life Lord of the Flies story except for these kids there were six kids who I'm not sure exactly where it was I posted it on my profile um somewhere it could be somewhere around Fiji they were at a boarding school and they got bored and they decided to take a boat out to do some fishing to get some more interesting food because they were bored with their like dormant, you know, sort of boarding school food. And they just took a banana and, you know, some water and a few. They didn't take a compass or anything. And they went out in the boat and they fell asleep. And then they woke up in the middle of the night and they'd, you know, sailed off and they were like stranded. And they ended up on this desert island for 15 months, six of them. And they were discovered by this amazing guy called Peter. I think he was Peter Warner. He was, you know, the Warner Bros, Mm -hmm. the American movie thing. He was a son of whoever it was that Arthur Warner or somebody like that. The really interesting article. Except for he, he didn't want to go into his dad's business. He wanted to sail and he went off and trained as a captain and he was sailing his own boat around and he suddenly noticed the vegetation on this island they were sailing past was not the way it should have been. I think perhaps they'd had some fires someplace. Anyway, he noticed. And then he saw these kids all like jumping into the water, like, ah, jumping. And he went and went and, you know, found them on this island. And they actually made a film about it. And these six kids, they had bonded together, banded together. Every day they would start with a prayer. And a song. They all had like their own special project. They'd grown gardens, they'd this, they'd that. I mean, it's just, it's really, really lovely wow. to read because you realize, because the guy who wrote The Lord of the Flies, I mean, that sort of view was very popular at the time. It's sort of like, oh, you know, look how civilization saves us, really. We're just savages. And Freud thought very much like that. And that's why, because I, I started training as like um, a psychoanalytical group therapist and I, it was Freudian there. And I just went, you know what, I'm not mm-hmm. doing this because 
if if you're sane in Freud's world, it means you accept that you're going to be slightly anxious and depressed all of your mm. life, and you have these healthy defenses, and that's how you're supposed to be. And I was just like, no, I don't, I don't think so. So, well, like what you were describing there, it was just making me think of that post about the kids and how happy I was to see it because. Like when I was a teenager, that affected me really badly, reading books like that, because it's like I needed I needed something yeah. different. I needed something. Doesn't sound uplifting. like a really great book you know. to be giving impressionable children. <laughs> no, no. And my friend Louise, who's a teacher, she said it's still oh on the school goodness. curriculum. Oh, my goodness. Outdated. Oh, don't get me started on the outdated of the school systems. I think that's why the schools yeah. are being so affected yeah. as well right now. But, you know, we could talk about a whole nother topic. <laughs> And uh, it, it might be a controversial one, but, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, that's really Karen actually said uh, she she's read that book and she says, I hated that book, too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, hi, yeah. Heather. Hi, Meredith. Hi, Lara. Hi, Carmelo. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jerry. We got a bunch of different oh. uh, new people t- popped in. Um, and so thank you for being here. That's Good lovely. afternoon. Well, yes. Okay. So um, that's, that is interesting. <laughs> um, there's, you know, there's definitely something that is going to be shifting in our collective. I think people are getting anxious, um, you know, and, and, and I want to just yeah. put out there everybody that I know, you know, I know it, the, these times are people are starting to want to come up and out, you know, the weather's changing, it's beautiful, and people want to be out and about, and they're getting frustrated, and they're starting to make demands, things like that. But I want to put out there that the best sort of a warrior, the best way to get things done is to be a peaceful warrior, harmoniously coming together. And yes, absolutely speaking your truth, absolutely speaking your voice. But remember, at the end of the day, that, you know, we don't want to bring in more of the old way of doing things, standing together in solidarity is a bit different than coming out and rising, you know, raising your pitchforks and making these demands. And um, I think there's a way to get it done, but it's a new way of doing it. If that's, if that's, if that makes any sense, you know, so kind of really going more in flow and coming together, working together is super important. Um, So that's one thing that's going on. What else is going on is that um, so the new moon is Friday. You know, every month, just like a full moon, we have a new moon. This is the time when the moon is symbolically reborn. Um, It goes through its process every month and, you know, it waxes and wanes and, you know, the waxing is the increasing up to the full moon, which is our time of empowerment, our time of growth, but it is simultaneously a time of completion. Then as we leave the full moon, we begin to wane and decrease in energy. And then we get to the point of what is called a dark moon. Dark moon is a period like the day or so before. You could probably feel it about even two days before a new moon. And the dark moon will be the 21st, depending on where you are. Again, um, I always encourage people to look up depending on their time zones. But let's just say it's a window of energy. And the dark moon is when it is the moon's literal death. You know, it goes into that or metaphoric, I should say, not literal, metaphoric death. And so that means it's a void of light non-action. It's a time for going within. It's a time for releasing. It's a time for reflecting all of those. So we can feel that energy. I think we started to feel it coming because the moon was already waning. Uh, So you start to feel decrease versus the increase and that raising of inspiration and energy that everybody gets. So this is a time this whole week, I think is going to be asking us to start to look within ourselves Again, that will be the 21st, which is about Thursday, Um, really looking within to see what isn't really serving us anymore. What have we learned through the past month cycle? And then the moon will be in the new moon will actually be in the sign of Gemini. Gemini is all about communication amongst other things, but I do feel like the communication is what's going to be heightened. Um, So that is the 22nd, which is Friday. New moons are a time of rebirth for the month start a whole new cycle, planting whole new seeds. So this is a time to really focus on your communication and how you can communicate your desires, your passions, your needs 
in a place of that doesn't violate your own truth, your own, you know, kind of honoring your voice, but also not going above and beyond. So there's that balance that you always have to find with the not. It's about being more mindful of your communication as well. So planting those seeds for what we can do with that energy moving forward. You know, people who are in the field of uh, public in some way, you know, what we're doing here, this is expressing and communicating our truth, our authenticity here. Um, So really focusing more on how you can continue to communicate um, and express yourself because it's not expressing yourself isn't always communication. It's also it's how you communicate expressing yourself, I think, is important as well, which is how are you how are you expressing yourself in the world? How are you putting yourself out into the world and um, expressing your, your desires, your passions, your dreams? It's that type of energy. Um, let's see if I wrote anything else down here. What also is interesting is that um, this new moon in Gemini is also bringing up some releasing of like old disputes, which is also about there's some communication there. So this also might be revisiting some arguments, um, some people that you've had some falling out with. Because remember, the overall theme here is we're moving back to solidarity, unity, love. And even though you don't, if you've had a falling out with someone, that, that it's more so what you're releasing is the energy, the power of the, um, the resentment, uh, the anger, the pain, the wound that is being held onto, that's creating some sort of discord. Even though it's between you and another person, it's rippling out into the web of light, into the web of life and everyone. It affects everyone. So the point is to focus on how you can communicate the releasing of that, whether it's a literal conversation that could happen and acknowledging and, and maybe placing some forgiveness where it's needed. But also it's to, it doesn't mean that you have to have that person in your life. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to agree to go back to being the way that, you know, things were. It's just of, you know, at the end of the day, we agree to disagree, but I hold no ill will towards you. You know, I have love for you and I wish you the best. And that creates this beautiful, liberating freedom because that's what this is about. Essentially, at the end of the day, it's all about freedom coming back to that freeing place of love. So this will come up. It's going to, I think, come up with this new moon because it's the opportunity to begin anew, to plant those new seeds. So just kind of giving everybody a little bit of a heads up about what could be coming in. Um, But also the new moon, Friday, the 22nd, 9 a.m. Eastern time. And I believe it's, um, what time did we say? 3 p.m.? Central European time, uh, Rachel, yes, on Friday on the new moon, which is also a very powerful energetic gateway day because it's a five, two, 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 two. <laughs> so it's a very, very powerful number there. So there's definitely, um, so we have there the, it's a four, right? If I'm not mistaken. So you have the two, 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 four, eight, and then you have the five, 13, four. So there we go about direction foundation, stability, and structure. Add the energy of that five from May, and we've got, we're shifting in direction. I talked about this. A lot of the numbers, I think that came up um, during the channelings and whatnot, we're all like five fives to two, shifting direction here. Um, But Rachel and I will be going live together to share um, a helpful transmission and something that we will be divinely inspired to do in our private evolving into the cosmic heart group. So that will be Friday morning, Eastern time, Friday afternoon uh, for Rachel. And we will share that um, again on our page. So if you haven't already joined the group again, there's so many benefits to it. And again, it's, it's free to join. So the, um, the information is still there on our page to join it. We'll share the links again, just in case, because sometimes things get get buried and hidden. But um, a lot of stuff happening this week. This is a big week. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I wanted to um, go back to all that light, all that light that was 
that was coming in because I was, you know, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. This is, I suspect, a sort of a, a one-off event because I feel like we've been getting, um, in that light stream, there's been like all the codes that we each need for our next phase of development of the evolution. I feel like we're like really, really like full up with them now and each one each one of us we've got this own unique thing going on but um jamie i was working with the bin, bin room mm -hmm. that you sent me and that was really really interesting so i did it today so jamie has this this bin yes. room are you going to put yes. that on the group this week right so she she has this bin room and you draw it and i was like you know stepped into it and it felt like, you know, when you're planting a seed, right? well, this is one way you can do it. This is what they used to do on Blue Peter. It was his kid's program when I was a kid. You get a pencil and you sit the pencil in and you go like that in the soil and then you drop the seed in and then you cover it over and you water it. It felt like it was doing that. It felt like, because this is bit, this goes right down the middle and my feet were just going like this and totally like grounded. And I thought, oh my, and that's how I thought, oh, that's why I feel like I'm in a cave. Cause like, we've had all this stuff given to us now. And now I don't know if it's going to take nine, nine months, but now we've got to process it all. And we're sort of in the womb. We're in the, we're in the cave now. And I think it will, I think it will be the mm -hmm. next year or nine mm -hmm. months. Or so. It's not, not a quick few weeks thing, but um, yeah. And what's interesting really... about it is that um, it, I asked for a name because I'm like, how do I refer to you? You know, cause this is a living, like this is a rune that was shown to me. Um, and I often receive uh, sigils and symbols and they, some of them are out there somewhere and they're just to be worked with. They're showing me now how to use these to work with them energetically. Like these are living symbols. They're alive. They're working with us energetically. Um, so I be being shown these so that we can share them with our cosmic heart tribe. And um, this symbol, I said, you know, okay, well, what do I call you? How do I refer to you? Because I see you and I'm working with you. It wanted to be called root, root. And I'm like, that's interesting. So I didn't understand that, but I wrote it down. And um, sure enough, like as you're talking, Rachel, and you're saying after, you know, kind of like it plants the seed in there and you're talking about this gestational period that we have to go through now. Yes, this is the period that it's now taking root. And after it takes root, yeah. that's when life begins to spiral up. And it, what's wonderful about this symbol, and again, I'm going to share all of this in the private group and how you yourself can draw it and work with it. Um, is it comes in from your being rooted above and below. So it's, it's like we're being anchored into the cosmic web of light. And at the same time, the matrix, the new earth matrix web of light and together it's just, it's, it's almost, it's acting as this create this protective shield around our potential. That's, yeah. for, that's, being yeah. rooted and blooming up, if you will. It's, kind of, it's very much like a plant. <laughs> it's very much like, you know. Because yeah. yeah. I, I don't know I don't know if you meant it, but like when I followed your directions of how to go around, I went round and then I went up a bit and then pulled it all the way down and it was like, yep. oh, yeah. It is. That's it's like it's being really, really good. rooted and but, anchored. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I lis I listened back to that Sarah reading today, the, the room reading that I did from the full moon to the full moon, because so I I um, work with the guidance from my sort of main spirit guide, which is Ascended Master Sarah. And from last week's show, I had this feeling of like something she wants to say. So I'm going to channel, I don't know what she wants to say, but it's something to do with that room now at the end of it. So I listened back to it today and um, it's on the page. It's on the ev ev evolving page. Um, and when I heard that first bit, I was really getting a different message this time. And it was all about, oh, my God, it was about all that evolutionary light that's been coming in, hitting us and the earth. 
Maybe it's something about that, because when you said something about the earth last week, Jamie, that really struck a chord about the earth rebirthing herself. But um, something about the Naudru. So I'll just say a little bit about the Naudru, because I am... It's one of my favourite rooms. <laughs> They're all my favourite. <laughs> They're all our favourite. <laughs> it's really connected to the Norns. So I think mm-hmm. you would also mm-hmm. really, really love this. <laughs> and the Norns are, they are the, they're responsible for the web, the web of weird, the web of life. They're responsible for like, like keeping it in balance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of parallels between the, them and right. the Greek ones. It's not quite the same, and we do get them a bit mixed up because we know the Greeks and we sort of put that on the Norns, and it's like, no, no, it's not mm-hmm. quite. But you know, they are there, very, very um, dispassionately making sure everything is is kept in order. They're not cruel and unkind, but they're very, very objective about it, and also connected to that that now so the Naud rune it's shaped like a a line like this with a cross through it and it comes at the end of the reading and there's this interesting story that I think Imelda told us who is teaching the Nordic shamanism course I've been doing Imelda Almqvist she's an amazing teacher and I can't remember where this story came from but I think this came from like maybe Scotland possibly the, the right north of Great Britain and um, there was something called the need fire. And so, so now it shows up, it, it is the need room. It shows up sometimes when things are quite difficult. So if you, th- like, if you go back like hundreds of years, if you think of like, you know, villages that had famine or plague or, you know, some sort of disaster was befalling them, they would, okay. Put out so people kept fires in their hearths in those days, they kept them going so they didn't have to relight the fire all the time. Everybody would put their fires out. So, this is if there was some disaster going on, everybody would put their fires out, and then they would light two huge fires, and then everyone would have to pass in between the fires, including all the cattle. And so, they were all the cattle, and everybody were like driven through these fires. And, you know, when Imelda was telling this story, I was thinking, wow, that's so shamanic, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, the cleansing, purifying. But there's something here about, like, you know, that now during, I was thinking it's like the whole planet is going through the need fire at the moment. But I just feel like, I don't know, I don't know. If she says something else, it just completely proved me wrong. I just feel like Sarah wants to say something about it so if it's all right yeah I'll just how exciting tune in to her and just stand on for a few minutes so okay so I'll go quiet and then when I start speaking again it'll be Sarah okay <sighs> welcome I am Sarah blessings are upon you I have some words which I wish to speak about the evolutionary process of the planet at this time and also the steps that each of you are taking. Firstly, I would say, be yourself. There is nothing to do except be yourself. You don't need to worry or stress about how to bring out these beautiful divine portraits that are living within each of you. That is the first thing I would say. Secondly, the best way that you can do this is to relax. Yes, (laughs) that is quite a challenge right now. This time of now that you are moving through, this need rune speaks of the difficulty and the challenges that are around you. And they are very real. Yet they are exactly what will pull the beauty 
the fantastic fullness of it all out of each and every one of you. To nurture yourself right now is the most important thing you can do. Of course, you must take care of your work, your life, your families, whatever that is around you. But then always make sure you have enough time to tend to that divine flame which is within you. I cannot say the words passionately enough of how important it is because the divine needs every single one of you. This is a terrible time that you are moving through and also a beautiful time, a beautifully terrible time, a terribly beautiful time. The polarities are kept in balance always. I am Sarah and I give you my blessing. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, amen. Blessed be. Wow. Wow, she was mm -hmm. really, really getting into that. <laughs> I could feel it. I started, to, my eyes actually started getting a little um, teary, like when she was talking about, you know, how we, we're all needed. And it's so true. We are. I mean, yeah. separation is yeah. an illusion. And it is the very bane of our existence. You know, this is very much not... The separation is what continues to create those issues. And we all play a very important role in this as one, you know? Mm. Yeah. I'm reimagining the world, reimagining it in right relationship with nature and us all mm. in right relationship with each other. And I've just started reading a, another book that I haven't read for years. I don't know if you know this one. What's it yes. called? Mist of Avalon. Do you know that one? Yes. I love, I haven't read the book, but I've or books. Yeah. There's many, but I've seen um I've seen the movie and it is. <sighs> oh, I have the book's so much better. The book is so much better. The movie they really took a lot of the power away from mm. the women in it. Well, I first read that book when I was sixteen, and I loved it. But I read it as a a, a work of fiction, you know. And I, I read it and read it and read it. And then I haven't picked it up in like, I don't know, 20 years or something. And I started reading it again and I got a real pull to read it. And I'm reading it again with fresh eyes and I'm seeing all the sort of mythical lore in it, which is really, really interesting. But also I'm seeing how much we have kind of, because you know, I sort of get a bit skeptical about things. I don't sort of believe things until I sort of see them with my own eyes. I know I, I, I sometimes can't believe I'm like that, but I am. But I'm like, um, I'm reading like all the things they could do like magically and like with their psychic powers. And I'm reading them and I'm thinking, you know what? We have forgotten so much. We have like fallen to, you know, to a level of vibration where we don't even realize how magical we are. And, you know, it's really possible, Rachel, they were actually doing these great acts of magic and doing these things and, and just seeing a whole, and yeah. just getting a whole different I read something. thing from it. Like, and I think it's because it's, mm -hmm. it's moving yeah, closer, it's, and it's irrelevant again. It's bringing us back to that Avalonian energy, which is very, very similar to um, the Lemurian Morian energy like the um it's believed that um you know avalon uh, merlin is a very big figure so, or who we understand as merlin uh is a very big figure of ancient avalon and it's actually believed that he has a uh, lemurian he was more of a lemurian energy and was bringing this lemurian wisdom and knowledge to avalon so they they link in there uh, you know kind of like I, I really was always very drawn to lemuria very obviously like I am Avalon. Avalon is me. It's just that energy. Oh, but um, kind of skip over Atlantis a bit. And there's probably really good reason for that with, with me. You know, there's maybe some things I need to work through with that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's just, it, 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 it's coming back for a really good reason. And 
um, I think I read something, I don't remember what it was, but I, it was this perspective and, and that talked even, it brought up the book of the Mists of Avalon and Marion Zimmer. And it said how she maybe unknowingly was channeling information that she mm-hmm. wasn't even fully aware of that she was bringing forward at the time. Um, I wish I could remember where I read that, but yeah, it's, well, like, yes, I mean, because I have, I have read all the ones she wrote on Avalon, and there was one that she left unfinished, and somebody, I think a friend of hers, finished it by channeling. She said she was channeling, chari- <laughs> channeling from Marion Zimmer Bradley and finished it, and that book actually wow. has so in it, I think. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is that one. Yeah, yeah. And it's really like, it sort of says so many mm. things that are very like Sarah like about unity. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. So may- maybe some, re- so maybe if you can't get to Glastonbury this year. I do. I got some reading. Got some to reading do. About it. I'll you travel some there reading in, my, in my, my journeys. I'll be there. Maybe just not physically. No. Do you know? Do you know? No. Yet? And you know I'm, 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 I've been this whole time, like, I know me, I, I see miracles happen. I have, you know, had miracles happen. I, I don't know if I talked about this last week with, you know, I went last year and um, uh, Tintagel was closed and Merlin's Cave was closed and it was taking its good old time getting back open because they were doing construction on a new bridge for Tintagel Castle. And um, it's part of the tour. It's part of the trip that we do. And so I had prepared my group in advance. Like, you know, we, we can go to Cornwall, but we, we may not be able to go to these places because it's all still closed. But I had a dream and there was a voice that I can only, I can only imagine had to have been Merlin. There was a voice in the dream and it told, I was on, I was on tour in um, Cornwall and the voice told me, um, you have to go into the cave. And in the dream, I had a conversation with myself and I was like, yeah, well, why wouldn't I go into the cave? Like, it's part of the trip. You know, it's what I'm supposed to do. Then I found out that it was closed and every, all this stuff was going on. And I reached out to Tor, who is tour guide. And I said, you know, this is happening. What's going on? Oh, it should be open by the time you get there. It, it was not. It wasn't until but I kept calling on Marilyn's energy and I kept working with Sarah. And, and I was like, you know, they kept saying, have faith expect miracles. Sure enough, the day we got to Cornwall, we get to England on like a Monday and then Cornwall is like Thursday, Friday, Friday morning. We're supposed to go to Merlin's cave. We first go to St. Necton's Glen and Tor runs into someone he knows who says, yeah, can you believe they just opened up the cave this morning? He just looked at me and the the look he gave me was priceless. And he was like, he just pointed at me like, Oh my God. So I'm trying to hold out and and just hold and have faith that we'll be able to go, but it's going to be, you know, as of June 1st, you know, I'm going to kind of have to start making some decisions and we're supposed to go mid July. And I don't know if no, well, we just had our holiday canceled in Malta. So that should have been next week. And they, they left it right till the, you know, Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks before just to, Well, they have not canceled our flights. Um, They have moved our airport. So we're flying out of a different airport. They haven't canceled it, but they did send out a message saying, you know, if you decide to fly, you may be allowed to, but the country that you're flying to may not allow you entry if it's not an essential reason for traveling. And it's like, why would you do that then? Why would you even let us fly? That doesn't make sense to me, but... I mean, in the the UK, they haven't actually, they didn't actually close the borders, which was a bit strange because they've been in such crisis with it all. And there has to be some talk about, about like if people come in and they have to be quarantined for two weeks. Yeah. But no one's decided. No one's decided. Yeah. And that's where we're kind of like hanging out in limbo. We don't, we don't know what to do, you know. And some people I know, uh, Lara, who's tuning in right now, she's from Portugal and she's part of the trip. And she actually said her the way that it works there for them is they, until the, the flight is actually canceled, she can't do anything. She can't try to get a, she can't even try to get a voucher. She can't get yeah. a refund. She can't do anything until the flight is canceled. So it's like, well, what if she's forced, she's forced to fly and the rest yeah, of us yeah. can't. It's just mind boggling. Oh, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because like I books like, 
500 pounds worth of flights for my son to go to Malta. And that was with a British company called EasyJet. And they have like, they sent out emails saying, oh, your flight's canceled. If you want to get a refund, follow this link. And then when you follow the link and you click for a refund, it doesn't go anywhere. (laughs) And they're not, I mean, they're not. And then you have to go through a whole thing uh-huh. of phoning up because they're like an internet company. So yeah. even getting a phone call for them is like quite a job, you know. But it's just, like, I think if they're just like these companies, if they suddenly refund everybody, yeah. they're going to go bankrupt. Can they do, are so they giving you the like, opportunity well, to get a voucher? Well, they're saying, you know, you can use the next year to sort of rebook flights and mm. use it up that way. And, you know, yeah, like a voucher thing, but. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not going out. I haven't even got a passport at the moment because I said I needed a re- replacement passport. And of oh, course, yeah. you know, that's all sort of gone <laughs> west as well. So I don't even have a passport so, right now anyway. So I don't want to go anywhere. This right change now. in direction <laughs> will hopefully bring about lots of opening and shifting for June. And that's, that's kind of what I've been holding on to. You know, I had, I had a vision um, way back when this first started and everybody kept putting the dates as like April 30th and, you know, we were going to be open April 10th. And I was like, mm. I saw specifically all of April, all of May, but June, I did not see. So maybe that's a very good reason. Maybe it's because things are going to begin to start to open back up and, you know, obviously safety is important. You know, no one's taking away from any of that, but I don't know. I don't know what you do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, if there were two countries that were going to open to each other, the US and the UK, have yeah. got better chances than anywhere else. So, you know, because they're trying to get back in business and they're thinking a lot about the economics and, you know, so sort of saying that without any, you yeah. know, just that's, I know that's how it is. Magic happens, miracles I mean, happen, knows, and I'm yeah. just putting the energy into that. So hopefully... I can come back in a few months and be like, look, I'm here, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Uh, I know we had a few other things we wanted to get to, and we have, ooh, 1952, yeah. my, my clock is telling me. The time is, it really time is. is I can't believe it is May 18th. I can't believe I'm talking about already June, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's blown. It really has. So is there anything else that you want to talk about? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. there was mm-hmm. the competition we were talking about. Me and Jamie were thinking that it would be really, really fantastic if people could give us more feedback. Because we'd really like to hear what you think about what we're doing. Also, other things you'd like to hear about anything, really. Any thoughts you have. So we thought, let's do a competition. You write things in about what you think. And then also, if you really like what we're doing, you can share it on your profile. And for doing this, we will offer, was it two months, Mm -hmm. Jamie? Two months. (laughs) Two months free into our new group which we will be doing an amazing transmission yeah. I was thinking what is it I've been calling it a thing up we're until now thing. we're gonna do a thing we're gonna do a thing it's gonna be a transmission it started sort of forming started coming in now and I think on that new moon energy Ooh. yeah <laughs> yeah good <laughs> and it's it, I know Sarah said, like, we don't have to do anything Mm -hmm. to, like, nurture our seeds, just be ourselves. I'll tell her next time, don't say that. But, like, we we want people to come and listen to our transmission seeds. Yeah, and that's one thing that I have – that's one thing I have learned about um, uh, the light language uh, sessions that I've done. And when it comes through, it always seems like it is opening pathways and sending in the light um, and the lights are codes. And so it's like, I just heard encoded frequency. So that's, it's coming into, it's, it's like when you have a, a guitar or an instrument that eventually at some point, it just needs a little bit of like a tuning um, in, and then 
or when we're doing certain things and you get, you can only go so far and then you just need a little bit of a boost upwards that helps you to expand up it. That's kind of what the light language always serves as. Um, so healing, um, downloads, activations, expansions, tunings. So I, even though, yeah, we don't have to do anything. Um, these things are just really, they're kind of giving us that little push through the door and then the rest kind of follows if that makes sense. So It's like an act of grace, really. That's how I think of it. It's like we can do so much. And then the act of grace from the angels or Pleiades, where it comes in and it does mm-hmm. this little bit of magic that just, you know, helps us go along. And it's exciting for me and Jamie as well, because we have started on something that feels a bit new, doesn't it? It's like we've responded to this call and we've come together. And this energy like, is just like, happening between us and with this group and we are I'm quite co-creating what is going to co-creating and that feels really good you know it's again it's the web it is the web of life the interconnected and this is this is how this is how you start to connect together this is how you start to work together which is this whole energy of uh you know May and this new moon and Pleiades and um, it's really about coming together again so yeah because I had I put I got a Pleiades card this month yeah I can't remember now it's like oh I don't know. I mean, there's just been so many things happening and I'm doing so many projects that are just wow they're just like I'm just loving all of it I actually <laughs> haven't had time to be sad but I'm not going away next week although I am because you know I don't get to see my son very often who lives in the UK and not at all at the moment and we haven't been on broad on holiday together since he was about 10 or something and this was for my 50th birthday and I love Malta it has this beautiful blue sea and the most amazing goddess energy it's just like honestly every single person on this call I think man or woman if you haven't been there, it's amazing. Yeah. It's a, yeah, yeah. I'll leave Malta for another time because I'll just go. Yeah, all, well, all, all. maybe it's just being re-detoured. Um, There's a divine detour, you know, and I, I, yeah. that's, what, that's how I like to think about it. Mm. So, yes, everybody, yeah. we'll be posting yeah. on the Cosmic Heart page uh, the information for the contest that we're having. And, um, you know, just any, any little feedback helps. And, uh, so when did we want to announce the winner? Did we say? Well, I think, um, what is it? Monday? We said, I think we said three days, didn't we? Three is the magic number, isn't it? And then if I can, if I can get Benji to do it, sometimes when he comes home from school, he's grumpy and sometimes he's all right, but he actually loves doing these things. We'll put all the names into a hat. And Benji, my seven year old, <laughs> can pull oh, one out so live sweet. on Facebook. <laughs> we, did, we did last time, but if he's in that a grumpy mood, that might make I guess, him out I guess of I'll grumpy. do it. <laughs> <laughs> it might do. It might. Yeah. Whenever he knows I'm doing something on here, he's, like, he's getting ready to come oh, in and it's like, oh, not so oh. tight, darling. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, and I think that's it, right? So we are um, the competition and uh, again, you'll get the two, the, the, the prize is two months because as of June, as of June 1st, we are going, um, we are, we will be charging, I think $22 for, for the group um, for the month. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that through, we'll do that through a site called Patreon. Really easy. Just sign up and it, sort it all out and a bit you, you don't have to worry about that now I yeah. did want to do a little a little sort of care a little care before we finished because I really love that we all come together like this and there's so many things happening in the world right now every week I have a little care thing a bit like you know Facebook mm-hmm. has got mm-hmm. that new <laughs> care emoticon yes <laughs> oh god but I love it <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for that that emoticon for many. Why isn't that one that hugs people? I'm going. It's like it's no, finally, finally. So, on a on a, on a little more serious note, I guess 
there's a lot of people suffering with mental health issues right now and you know I'm really aware of this because I used to be a mental health nurse and I used to work on acute psychiatric wards with people who were in like high states of distress and I mean I think even people who have good mental health generally have probably been yeah. noticing that, that they're, they're struggling we're all struggling so people who were already a bit wobbly you know it is, it is a lot for us to um deal with and and when I was speaking to my son in the UK the other day because he lives where I used to live in in um, around Red Hills which is sort of on the outskirts of London and there's like a big building there with the Sainsbury's that goes up like lots of stories oh. and there was a young guy that had jumped off the top of Sainsbury's and and young men they're in a really high risk suicide rate because they have high testosterone levels and they get distressed and they don't really know what to do and they're very impulsive and they're just like bang and I just um if 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 it feels right to you to, to join in I just like you to um join in with me just like feeling into our heart centers and just really bringing out the love that we have for each other and for the whole of humanity and just sending out like a huge huge hug because we can't be there for every one of these people but we can send out our love and how much you know we care about each and every single person that is suffering at the moment as you know the human race we're going through this together and you know I will support everybody who I can within my own circle that's all we can do but we can also send out divine love and just ask for divine love to be channeled through us and to go out to wherever it's needed and it it is powerful doing these things I know we can't see it I know it's invisible but just ask for divine love to be sent through you and if there's someone special for you some deity or a centered master or someone like Mary Magdalene who is a special favorite of mine for these things you know say to them please send your love through me and you know send your love as well because your love is is just as wonderful as anybody else's and um yes who knows a person who's just on the edge of something might just catch a little bit of that and and it will pull them back and you know speaking as a nurse who's worked with people it's not always the worst thing for someone to pass over if if they're ready to go they're ready to go and our souls are eternal and we can come back and we can learn again or some people choose to return to source and they say you know what <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore and they go and do something else it's all fine I just wanted us a chance to just express the sort of mmness we have in our hearts and just send it out as a group because it is just so powerful and, and Rachel I feel like I have some light language ready to that. come through I'm starting, I can feel it, the uh, energy okay. coming through my heart, and I'm starting to kind of like spin a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm just going to further assist in bringing forth some love, sending out, and all of you are each intricate strands in this beautiful web of life and in this web of light, and all of you have the ability to send out that love and light through those strands that will reach everyone, because we are all in this web together. So I'm just going to bring forth some light language, some love, and some healing light. Yerat in no keshimia nati ir, ak in nati shima, ierotu nariat amian, vashima ana ierot unak ir, verati shima niat ir, ariat ir and min, umarishimia net ir, ak ierotu shima. Bet i ana ish im an, brat it it et of shamat ear, varatashama ear, mash ash em an in un at et, baratar ish im an at ish, brutu near mariat eshim. In divine love and light. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. That was perfect. I 
just that went into peace, peace and love and balance. Yeah, then it's just lovely. Thank you. Oh, all right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for being here with Rachel and I this week, for tuning in, and even those of you uh, tuning in on replay later. Thank you. Um, we're happy to be able to be together and co-create, creating space together. Yes, and we'll see those of you who are going to join us on Friday and um, Monday. Yes, otherwise we'll we be will. back here. All right, Monday. have a wonderful week, everyone. Have a good week, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just pressing all my buttons. It always asks me if I'm sure I want to stop the broadcast. It's like, yeah. <laughs>